Why, hi there. I'm Ron Jockett at Retro Sports Network presents the Saturday Game of the Week. Today, from Comiskey Park, it'll be the New York Yankees and the Chicago White Sox. But before we get into that, let's review what happened on a busy Friday night in baseball on the 19th of June. Double header between the Phillies and the Mets from Shea, where we will be on Tuesday, June or July 7th, 1964, for the All-Star Game. That's right, the Mets hosted the All-Star Game that year in, in Shea Stadium, and it was a split decision between the Mets and the Phillies. The Phillies won the opener 8-4. to four. Art Mahaffey with the sixth win of the year to go 6-4. and four. And the Mets won the nightcap 12-1. to one. Galen Sisko with his third one of the year. Ray Culp drops to 1-4. and four. Another doubleheader yesterday that actually has some playoff importance, or at least the potential for playoff importance. The Red Sox and Orioles played a doubleheader from... Memorial Stadium. The Sox won the opener 4-3 to three in 10 early with the win. Harvey Haddock's with the loss. And in the ninth cap, the Orioles won 3-2 to two in 10. Stu Miller with his third of the year. Hefner goes 0-2. Elsewhere, Red shut out the Dodgers 8-0. Ryan Dern with Ryan Dern with a win. He goes to 1-0. Joey Jay with the second save of the year. Senators beat the Athletics 10-7. Ridzik with the win. Drabowski with the loss. Uh, Giants and Cardinals from St. Louis. The Cardinals, who now have Lou Brock, won 7-3. Bob Gibson goes to 7-5 on the year. Milwaukee beat the Colt 45s 9-6. Minnesota beat Detroit 6-4. Jim Cott goes to 9-0 on the year. Mickey Lowich 7-5. And finally on the West Coast, the Angels beat the Indians 3-2 in 10 innings. All right, National League standings are this. The Pirates hold a five-game lead over San Francisco, an eight-game lead over St. Louis, eight-and-a-half over Cincinnati, nine over the Cubs, and ten over the Milwaukee Braves. In the American League, the Yankees and Twins are tied. Twins have played four more games than the Yankees, so the Yankees are technically have four games in hand. Orioles are three back. The Shy Sox and Tigers are eight back. No one else is above 500. When we come back, Oh, I should probably tell you what's coming up on the 24th and 27th. Because I will forget. Next week on the Wednesday Night Baseball, on Wednesday Night Baseball, again, you'll see the New York Yankees and the Baltimore Orioles as they continue to fight for the American League flag. And on next Saturday, you'll see the Pirates and the, and the Reds from Forbes Field in Pittsburgh. So those are the next two games. The Yankees and Orioles from Baltimore on Wednesday. And the Pirates and Reds from Forbes on Saturday. So a full day of baseball to come. The Yankees and the White Sox in a moment. And from Comiskey Park, it is a beautiful day here in the south side of Chicago. 74 degrees. The wind gently blowing from right to left. It's not the windy city today. And boy, we end up with a pretty decent pitchers matchup. We have Gary Peters going for the White Sox. And Whitey Ford this afternoon for the Yankees. Peters was a 20-game winner in real life, but the White Sox were not a 500 team in real life. They were much better than that. They come into this one 28 and 28. Gary Peters is six and six with a 2.75 ERA and 95 innings. He's allowed 89 hits, surrendered six home runs. He has walked 32 and struck out 77. And but the defense behind him, it's Dave Nicholson in left. Mike Hirschberger in center, Floyd Robinson in right. Robinson is probably the best overall defender. Hirschberger has a gun for an arm, 9 out of 10. In the infield, Pete Ward at third. He has an 11-game hitting streak for the White Sox. Ron Hansen at short, Al Weiss at second, Joe Cunningham at first. Would carry on, it's not Mark, behind the plate for Peters. Here is the lineup for the Yankees. Tony Kubek will lead it off at short. Bobby Richardson plays second and bats second. You get both Maris and Mantle today. Rogers in right field batting third, hitting 212. Mickey at 250 is the center fielder. Tom Tresh is in left, he'll bat fifth. Elston Howard, the catcher, bats sixth. Joe Pepitone, who is second in the majors in homers with 21, bats seventh. Phil Lins in his harmonica will bat eighth and play third. And Whitey Ford is on the mound. He will bat ninth. So in steps Kubik. At 253, five homers and 14 RBI. And we didn't have to redo this stadium. This was already came with the game, so the ticker should work just fine. 
Lefty versus lefty, and Kubik takes an 0-2 curve for strike three. That's how this one starts, one out. And already the Mets are ahead of the Phillies, 2-0 in the third. Bobby Richardson at 273, no homers and 16 RBI. Pitch to Bobby, that will be lined in there just past the grass into right center for a base hit. So Richardson on first. And then I'll bring up Roger Maris, who's at 212. He's really struggling. Seven homers and 21 RBI. This is the 59th game for the Yankees. They are 37 and 21, tied with the or uh, the Twins, pardon me. And the Shy Sox trail by eight. Pitch to Maris, strike three. A one-two fastball swung on and missed. So two strikeouts for Peters, and that'll bring up Mr. Mantle. Bicky again, along with. Is struggling at 250. Should be a 300 hitter. 12 homers and 29 RBI. Peters delivers, and there's a line drive to short that Hanson will haul in, and that retires the side. No runs, one hit, no errors after one half of one inning. The Yankees, nothing, and here come the White Sox. Well, first, here comes Whitey Ford, who is 10 and 2 on the year with a 217 ERA. No wonder why they called him the chairman of the board. In 120 innings, he's allowed 100 hits. One home run. He gives up a couple here today. I need my hat because this is such a pitcher's part. 37 walks and 80 strikeouts. So Whitey is doing what he should be doing, and that's one of the reasons why the Yankees are at the top of the heap. Uh, defensively around him, it's Linz at third, Kubek at short, Richardson at second, and Pepitone at first. Richardson is... Just an all-world fielder, and Pepitone's pretty good himself. It's Tresh in left, Mantle in center, Maris in right. Tresh has the best range, Mantle has the best arm. And Ellie Howard behind the plate, who is just an all-world catcher. Here's the lineup for the Shy Sox today. Mike, Mike Hirschberger will lead it off. Al Weiss will bat second. Pete Ward bats third. Ron Hansen cleans up. Lloyd Robinson bats fifth. Dave Nicholson will bat 6th, Cunningham will bat 7th, Carrion, who I really don't know, will bat 8th, and Gary Peters, who threw 13 pitches, will bat ninth. Wins lead the Tigers 1-0 in Minneapolis, or Bloomington. Hershberger steps in at 218, no homers, and 18 RBI. Pitch, and it's ball 4, so this one starts with a walk. Just high on a full count pitch, and that's how this one starts. Here's Weiss, 247. Yankees do not play for the bunt. Three homers and 18 RBI. And so we'll drop one. It is down, and it's a tremendous play by Pepitone, who had to run in to get it. And Howard, pardon me, and it's he's out. So they tried for the hit. It did not work. Hershberger goes to second, and here's Pete Ward. At 312, nine homers and 27 RBI, and is sitting on a 11 game hitting streak. Pitch to Ward. Oops, I hit the wrong button. I hit bunt instead of hit, and so it's a bunt to Whitey. He throws to third, and that's an out, two out. So he's on with the fielder's choice. And I'll bring up Ryan Hansen. That's not a single. Hansen at 230, three homers and 24 RBI. Pitch to Ron as a ground ball to first. Pepitone takes, flips it to Ward, cover, Ford covering, and that retires the side. Ward, Ford, he's out anyway. No runs, no hits, no errors. After one, no score. At the Met in Bloomington, it's 4 0 Twins. Here's Tom Tresh. Tom at 277, nine homers and 27 RBI. Fly ball to right. Robinson's there, one out. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's off the wall for a double. And so that wins the infamous John Sterling Award, brought to you by Lowe's. Your home improvement needs and sponsors of the Yankees Broad Pink Ass Booth, because as always, that's baseball, Susan. Phillies and Mets are tied at four in the fourth. Here's Howard. 274, three homers and 23 RBI. Peters delivers. Ground ball to second. I got this one right. Weiss over to Cunningham for the out. 
Tresh moves over to third, one out. Chicago will play back for Pepitone, who is at 294, 21 homers and 53 RBI. Peters delivers, fly ball to right. Robinson in the corner, makes the catch. Tresh will tag and score without a throw, and the Yankees go up 1-0. Now brings up Phil Lins at 198, a homer and 6 RBI. Cubs up on the Pirates, 1-0 in the 6th. Pitch to Lins, chopper to first. Cunningham takes it to the bag himself, and that retires the side. One run on, scored on the... Scoring, one hit. Oh, that didn't sound very good at all. And no errors. After one and a half, it's the Yankees one, the White Sox nothing. Here's Floyd Robinson at 350. Five homers and 22 RBI. Nicholson and Cunningham to follow here in the second. Pitch from Ford, strike three, a 2-2 pitch. Robinson looked at it, and it was strike three. Here's Nicholson, Dave at 234, 12 homers and 31 RBI. Board delivers, popped up left side, Tress should have it, he does, two out. Joe Cunningham at 175, no homers and six RBI. Pitch from Ford is a line drive into right center, that's extra bases, Cunningham will have a double. And I should know that, name it's Camillo carry on. No relation to Mark as far as I can tell. He's at 275 on the year with 9 RBI. And 4 in real life. 2 out. Runner on 2nd is Cunningham. 1-0 New York. Pitch to carry on. Chopper. Left side. Base hit. Cunningham will round 3rd. Tresh's throw home will not be in time. And we are tied up at 1. I'll bring up Gary Peters at 219, two homers and seven RBI. One one the score. Fly ball into shallow right center. Mantle comes in and that retires the side. One run, two hits, and no errors. We go to the third. It's the Yankees and White Sox tied at one. So up steps Whitey Ford with Kubek and Richardson to follow. Four. 4 to 091 with two RBI. Whitey grounds out on the second. Weiss to Cunningham for one out. So Peters, 37 pitches through the first nine hitters. He should go around 145. Two and a third innings, two hits. A run it was earned, and he struck out two, including Mr. Kubek. His first time up. Tony's 0 for 1. Pitch to Tony. Grounded to third. Ward tosses it over. Two quick outs. Bobby Richardson, the batter. Bobby is single his first time up. He's one for one. Here's the pitch. Grounded to short. Hanson to Cunningham, and that retires the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. A clean inning for Gary. Two and a half in the books is 1-1. One, one. So top of the lineup for the Shy Sox here to start the third. Hirschberger, Weiss, and Ward. Through nine hitters, two innings for Whitey, 41 pitches, two hits, a run it was earned. He has walked one, including Mike Hirschberger. In fact, it was Mike Hirschberger. And has struck out one. So Hirschberger is 0 for, is 0, for 0. And there's a little looper that will dying quail that drops into right field for a base hit. Al Weiss, the batter. Al sacrificed Bunnett his last time up. Hit and run this time. The throw goes down. Hirschberger is a dead duck. 22% chance of stealing, and Elston Howard throws him out nine times out of eight. So the 1-1 one, one count now to Weiss. One out, nobody on. They play for the bunt. Weiss swings. We'll pop it up. Pepitone there on the grass. Makes the catch two out. Here's Ward, who mistakenly punted his last time up. He's out for one. And that hitting streak goes to 12 as he puts that one all the way to the gap in right center field. So extra bases for Ward on a double. Brings up Ron Hansen, who is 0 for 1. Fourth hit for the White Sox already. Yankees have two. Pitch to Hansen. Ground ball to third. Lenz dives in, throws it over to Pepitone, and that retires the side. 
No runs, two more hits for the White Sox. No errors after three. 1-1. One, one. And barring a computer malfunction at this point, we should have at least two checks at the out-of-town scoreboard during the game. Bottom five at Shea. Mets and Phillies are tied at four. Bobby Wine with his second homer of the year for the Phils. Bennett and Fisher pitching in that one. Cubs and Pirates are tied at one in the eighth. Ernie Brolio, who the Cubs wanted, is on for the Chicago. Al McBean pitching for Pittsburgh. Top three in St. Louis. Cardinals trail the Giants 2 0. Lynn Hobby pitching for the Cardinals. Ray Henley pitching or Henley pitching for the Giants. Houston in Milwaukee tied at one of the fifth. Not Barton, Tony Cloninger for the Braves. In Minnesota, Don Mincher with his fifth of the year. Top the third. Phil Regan and Mud Cat Grant pitching for the Twins. Here will be Maris, Battle, and Trash. Rogers is 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Pitch to Maris is ball four. So a full count. It was off the outside corner, and Maris draws a walk for Mantle. Who was 0 for 1? Pitch gets away from carry on, and it'll be called a wild pitch. The splitter split too much. It went all the way to the backstop, and Roger moves up to second. So three balls and a strike to Mantle. Fresh on deck. Pitch from Peters. Fly ball left center. Hirschberger has it. For the out. Maris retreats. One out. Tom Tresh with a double and a run scored. In the second for New York. Joe Pepitone brought him home. Right back to Peters. Over to Cunningham. Two out. So the Yankees have a runner in scoring position. And he's stranded right there so far. Here's Ellie. Howard is 0 for 1. Pitch to Howard, popped up, right side. Cunningham should have it. He does, and that does retire the side. No runs, no hits, no errors after three and a half. It's the Yankees and White Sox tied at one. They are no longer tied at Shea. In the sixth, the Mets lead the Phillies seven to four. It'll be Robinson, Nicholson, and Cunningham for Chicago here in the fourth. If you're a follower of the series, as I try to get back in position here, you know that we play as played. I manage the home team. Computer manages the visitors. So for those of you who don't like the Yankees, you see way too much of them, and I get to manage them a lot because this was the last year that they're good. But the curious thing I wanted to talk about with the Phillies is that they didn't really start to panic until the middle of September. I mean, this team got off to a 10-and-a-half game lead. They have literally... Had a 20 and a half game swing. They're well out of it. I don't know if Pittsburgh hangs on to win the league. They're 41 and 18 right now, but it, the Phillies are not part of this fight. See, Robinson is 0 for 1. It's from Ford, ball 4. So Robinson draws the walk. Here's Nicholson. Dave is 0 for 1. Ball 4 was all. Was outside. Second walk for Whitey. It's to Nicholson. Fly ball to left. Tresh has it. One out. The wind has died here at Comiskey, and it's just a gorgeous day. 79 degrees. Here's Joe Cunningham. Joe doubled his first time up, his seventh of the year. Throw to first. Robinson wasn't going anywhere. Tigers lead. Tigers trail the Twins 4-2 to two in the fourth. So good day all around. Cunningham puts that one in the gap in left center. Robinson trudges to third. He will hold right there. And so second and third, one out for Carrion, who had the RBI. And RBI single his first time up. So Whitey not looking like Whitey Ford of old today. Pitch to carry on. Ground ball to third. They will not try to they will not draw a throw. A throw to first is in time for the out. Two out for Peters. Who can hit. He has four real life home runs in 64. 0 for 1 today. Pitch from Ford. Struck him out. On the inside part of the plate. So the Shy Sox strand two. 
No runs, one hit, no errors. We played for the Yankees, won the White Sox one. Excuse me. Steltzer and recording don't always mix. Here's Joe Pepin, told He had a sack fly his first time up, so he drove in his 54th run. Linz and Ford to follow. Gary Peters here in the top of the fifth. Down the road at St. Louis, the White Giants lead 2 0. Pepitone strikes out. A 2 2 breaking ball pitch. Swung on and missed strike three. That's three for Peters. Here's Linz. He's 0 for 1. Popped up by the bag at second. Weiss is there. Two out. Yankees in their traditional road grays. The only difference in their uniform now and then, besides the material, is that New York was not highlighted or outlined in white. But you know the rest of the Yankee uniform. Shy Sox are in white, or in their home pinstripes with socks across the chest and the hat with socks in a different font written across the top. Whitey is 0 for 1. Pitch from Peters. Ground ball to short. Hanson to Cunningham. And that retires the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. Halfway home from Comiskey. 1-1. One, one. So through 18 batters, Whitey Ford has thrown 76 pitchers. Four innings. 76 pitches, not pitchers. Or trombones in the big parade, if you want to go that far. With 110 coronets right behind. Four innings, five hits. The run it was earned. He has walked two and struck out two. Hershberger, they have yet to retire today. He has singled and walked. Pitch from Ford, and he won't retire Hershberger this time. It's a single through the hole and right. So nobody out for Weiss, and we will not hit and run this time. Weiss is 0 for 1 with a sacrifice. Pitch, and that's going to be a ground ball to short. Kubek's only play is to first. Hershberger moves up 90 feet, one out. Good play by Tony. Here's Ward. Pete extended his hitting streak to 12 his last time up. One for two with a double. And he strikes out this time an 0-2 curve. Swung on and missed for strike three. That's the third for Ford. Ron Hansen, the batter, he's 0 for 2. You'll see these Yankees again. I know, I know, I know. Wednesday night on the Wednesday night on Wednesday night baseball in Baltimore against the Orioles. Next Saturday, we go to Ford Field for the Pirates and the Reds, who are in second place. And I don't want to get too far ahead of myself here. But on July 11th, so about three weeks from when you'll see this, we'll have another doubleheader for you if things hold. The preliminary game for games would be a doubleheader at Yankee Stadium between the Twins and the Yankees. Yes, that actually is exciting. All right, Ron Hansen is 0 for 2. Someone who clicked across one of these by mistake. I'm sorry. <laughs> What do you mean a baseball game from 60 or 53 years ago is exciting? Trust me, that it should be. It, it might be the season for the Twins if the Yankees sweep. Hanson pops this one in the right center. Mantles there for the out, and that retires the side. No runs, one hit, no, one hit. English is a wonderful language. Me learn it one day. No errors. After five, the Yankees and White Sox are tied at one. Speaking of tie games, the Tigers have tied the Twins in the fifth at four. Tony Kubek will lead us off here in the sixth. Richardson Maris to follow Mantle if anyone should reach. Kubek is 0 for 2 with a strikeout. As the Yankees have put 18 men to the plate so far, Peters a not so economical 82 pitches in five innings, two runs or two hits. A run it was earned. He's walked one and struck out three. Kubek. Hits a little number to short, throw over to Cunningham, not in time. So it's an infield single for Kubek. And that'll bring up Bobby Richardson, one for two. I personally praise Tony, by the way, for the way he taught people the game during his years at NBC. I mean, goodness, he was there from 66 to when NBC lost baseball, I would say tragically. But that's not a tragedy. It's sad for me. But, but, but for a lot of you, you probably don't remember. Kubek was a master of the game and how it works and explain it in a way that, that made you think. That's not a rap against uh, what John Madden did with football. 
because that changed everything. But, but Kubek could teach the game, but he was so frightened. When he made the transition from player, he had a stuttering problem, to broadcaster, he rushed through everything. And so the suggestion was his first offseason was to read poetry into a microphone and do a tape recorder with probably a real to reel at that point. And that's how he learned to become a good broadcaster. He just was able to pick up the meter and the pace of the poems he read, and, and it worked for him. Anyway, here's Richardson. He's one for two. Cardinals lead the Giants 4-2 to two in the fifth in St. Louis. Pitch from Peters is ball four. So Kubek's on with a walk. Runners on first and second from Maris, who is walking, struck out. He's 0 for 1. Pitch to Roger. Line drive to Weiss. Throw to Cunningham, and they double off Richardson. Oh, baby. Crowd should be react to that a little bit better. Richardson was leaning, and Weiss is a, was a smart player. Cunningham broke right towards the bag for the out. Here's the Mick. Mickey's 0 for 2. Kubek on second. Two out now. That killed a rally. Ground ball to third. Ward over to Cunningham, and that retires the side. So the Yankees, no runs on a hit, no errors. Five and a half in the books. It's 1-1. The Mets are pounding the Phillies, 13-4. to I assume the New York wins. It'll be Robinson, Nicholson, and Cunningham for the White Sox here in the six. Floyd is walking, struck out. He's 0 for 1. Pitch from Ford as a chopper down to Richardson over to Pepitone for the F. Here's Dave Nicholson. He's 0 for 2. Whitey's pitch. Liner to third. Lins has it. Two out. Joe Cunningham has improved his batting average to 195 today on two doubles. Also scored the lone White Sox run in the second. Pitch to Joe, bounder to second. Richardson to Pepitone, and that retires the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. Six in the books. We are knotted up at one. Sorry for all the flashy flashies. All right, let's go through the scoreboard. The Mints lead the Phillies 13-4. to four. Samwell, that's not one. Three for three. Fisher and Roebuck going in that one in the bottom of the seventh. The Pirates beat the Cubs. Bill Mazeroski. With his fifth of the year. I don't know. That might have been a walk-off. Um, McDaniel with a loss for the Cubs. He goes to 3-4. and four. Pretty with a win for the Pirates. He's now 1-1. One and one, And the Pirates are now 42-18, and 18, if memory serves me correctly. Bottom six in St. Louis. Cardinals lead the Giants 4-2. to two. Still Henley and Hobby. Milwaukee leaves the Colt 40, leads the Colt 45s 3-1. Lee May with his third of the year for the Braves. And Detroit has moved ahead of Minnesota 6-4. to four. Don Mincher with the last home run in that game. It is still Regan and Grant in the bottom of the fifth. Here we're tied at one on the top of the seventh. Peters and Ford going at it. Here's Tommy Tresh. He has doubled and scored. The lone Yankee run in the second. And he strikes out this time a 1-2 changeup. Strike three. So that's the fourth for Peters. Here's Howard. Elston is 0 for 2. Pitch from Gary. There's a ground ball base hit left side. So a single for Howard. Fourth hit for New York. And that'll bring up Joe Pepitone, who has a sack fly for an RBI and a strikeout. 0 for 1. Pitch to Joe. Fly ball in the shallow left. Nicholson's there for the out. Two out. Phil Lynn's the batter. Phil is 0 for 2. Chopper to short, and oh, actually Chopper to second. Weiss flipped it over to Hanson to retire the side 4-6 on the fielder's choice. No runs, one hit, no errors. The Yankees, I don't believe, stranded anyone. Stretch time in Comis at Comiskey, it's still 1-1. So carry on. Peters and Hirschberger here in the seventh for the White Sox. Camillo was 1-2. for two. He had an R that RBI single in the second. And there's a base hit up the middle, and Mantle misplays it. Will carry on go for two? He will. It is a single and an E8. It was a ground ball that Mantle went to field. It was a base hit all the way, and it kind of 
It must have hit a rock or a hole. It just kind of skipped over the glove. So carry on moves to second. Nobody out for Peters, and you know he's going to bunt here. The Yankees are playing for it. Bunt is down. Throw to third. They retire carry on. It does not work. Howard threw out a slow counterpart. So they'll trade. They'll kind of lose something there. That's a big one for the Yankees. Peter is on first, two out, or one out, pardon me, for Mike Hershberger with single twice and one. So through 27 batters, Whitey Ford, a good 106 pitches, six in the third inning, seven hits. A run earned, walked two and struck out three. So the Yankees will make that trade all the time. Twins have cut the Detroit lead back to one, six to five in the sixth. Hirschberger gets away from Howard. So Peters moves up to second on the pass ball. So what the White Sox, or what the Yankees give us, they have taken away. Or maybe what the Yankees have taken away, they have giveth. A 1-0 count to Hirschberger. Pitch from Ford. Fly ball to center. Mantle should have it. He does. And with two out, Peters is going to be an anchor to second. He has a 72% chance of making it. But you never want to run yourself out of the inning. Because I usually do that once every three or four of these games. Here's Weiss. He's over two. Ground ball to third. Lins to Pepitone. And that retires the side. No runs, a hit, and one error. After seven, it's still 1-1. One, one. So Whitey Ford, and I imagine he'll hit here. Kubek and Richardson to follow here in the eighth inning. Ford does not hit. It'll be Cleet Boyer, so Whitey's day is done. Cleet at 189, a homer and 9 RBI. And if you excuse the, flash, the flashy flashy here, Whitey, seven innings, seven hits. A run it was there, and he walked two and struck out three. 111 pitches for Ford, 78 strikes and 33 balls. And unless something happens here with the Yankees in the eighth and no decision. I gave you Boyer's numbers. Pitch from Peters. There's a chopper to third. Ward to Cunningham for the first out. So Gary Peters, 27 batters into his performance. 115 pitches, seven in the third innings. Four hits, a run it was earned. He has walked two and struck out four, including Mr. Kubek who was one for three with a strikeout. Pitch to Tony. Ground ball to first. Cutting hand to Peters. For the out. Two out. Bobby Richardson, the batter. Bobby, his single. And walked. He's one for two. Chopper right back to Peters. Over to Cunningham. And that retires the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. After seven and a half, it is 1-1. One, one. So it'll be Pete Mickelson. Pictures for the Pirates, but he's obviously a Yankee pitcher. Has and a gosh darn good one too with a one and one record. His ERA is 077, three saves, 23 innings, 16 hits. He has walked 11 and struck out 16. Ward, one for three. At hitting streak is now at 12 games, as he hit a double and has also struck out. First pitch from Mickelson is popped up in the center. Mantle has it, one out. Full count was the count there. A nine pitch at bat. So I don't usually go with a lot of the pitch count things in the play by play to start with because you just never know. So Mickelson could go as high as 55. Here's Hansen. 0 for 3. Pitch to Ron. Ball four. So the White Sox had the go ahead run on and one out here in the bottom of the eighth. Here's Floyd Robinson. He's 0 for 2. He has walked and struck out. Nicholson to follow. Mets 15 to 4 over the Phillies. Pitch to Hanson as if our Robinson is in the shallow right center. Mantle comes in, makes the catch. Two out for Nicholson. So it's right. He's at a 230 clip. So we won't pitch it for him. He's 0 for 3. Popped up left side. Warren popped up. That's gone. <laughs> Tress turned and watched it go. It looked like it was going to be a pop-out 
and it just kept going. It just kept going. So the White Sox lead three to one here in the eighth. Here comes Joe Cunningham. A wheel pinch hit for you. He only hits right. He's at a 198 clip. So Tommy McCraw, who hits him at a 255 clip, will come in. 238, four homers, and 17 RBI. It's from Mickelson, right back to Phil. Oh, I mean, the, the Pete <laughs> throws to first. <laughs> and now he tires the side. How about that? Phil Mickelson, the golfer, and a pitcher for the Yankees. It's Pete Mickelson, not Phil. The two runs on a hit and no errors. We go to the ninth. Gary Peters will get a chance to close this one out. The White Sox lead 3-1. to one. McCraw will stay in the game and play first. Maris, Bannell, and Tresh here in the top of the ninth. Maris is 0-2. The walk and a strikeout. Tigers lead the Twins 8-5. We'll do this because there might not be a bottom of the ninth. Mets are about to put the fills out of their misery, 15 to 5. Uh, we told you that the Pirates beat the Cubs 3 to 1. Top of the eighth, Giants and Cardinals are tied at 4. Sean Taylor pitching there. And that one, Milwaukee beat Houston 5 to 1. Lee May with a homer is third. Cloninger picks up the win as fourth. And the Tigers lead the Twins 8 to 5 in the seventh. Tony Oliva, 3 for 3 for the Twins. And the pitch to Mara, strike three, a one-two fastball. That's five for Gary. That'll bring up Mickey Mantle. Mickey is 0 for three. Here's the pitch. Ground ball to short. Hanson to McCroft, two out. So the last chance for New York is Tommy Trash. He is one for three. He has doubled, struck out, and scored a run. Got him, and that's the ball game. An 0-2 pitch swung on and missed. The White Sox knock off the Yankees three to one. So Gary Peters is your well-deserved player of the game. Uh, he could have thrown 153 pitches today. Here's how we got the runs. It was uh, run scoring wise, it was pretty simple. Joe Pepitone with a sack fly in the second made it one nothing New York. The White Sox tied it with a Camillo carry on single to score a run to t to make it one one. Pete Ward extended his hitting streak to 12 in the third. And Dave Nicholson's pop gun home run to left field in the eighth gives the White Sox a 3-1 to one win. Joe Cunningham, 2-3 for three with two doubles. A notable player. Gary Peters, as the computer says, said an outstanding complete game. Nine innings, one run. It was earned. Four hits. Walked two. Struck out six. He moves to seven and six. The Shy Sox moved to 29 and 28. Pete Mickelson, not Phil. Takes the loss. One inning, two run, two earned runs. The big home run to Nicholson from Nicholson. A walk, and that was the lone hit. He drops to one and two on the year. Well, let's go through the full day in baseball before we let you go. The Mets did beat the Phillies 15-5. Pittsburgh beat Chicago in 10-3-1. Bill Mazeroski with a two-run walk-off to win that game. So that's pretty good. The Pirates go to 42-18. and 18. Uh, Giants beat the Cardinals 6-4 and 10. How did that one end? Alanir with a two-run single for the Giants to give them the lead. Mickey uh, Willie Mays had a two-run homer in the seventh to tie that game at four, by the way. I love it. All the logos are showing up correctly. Braves beat the 40, Colts 45s 5 to 1. Tigers beat the Twins 8 to 7. Cincinnati beat the Dodgers 4 to 1. Drysdale loses. He goes to 9 and 4. So it's still Pitts, Pittsburgh by 5 over the Giants, 8.5 over the Reds, and 9 over the Cardinals. Red Sox shut out the Orioles 1 0. Dave Moorhead with the win. He goes to 5 and 7. 
rejoice. Boston, how did they get the run? Frank Melzone with an RBI single to score. Stewart in the seventh for the lone run of the game. Milt Pappas with the complete game loss, by the way. So the Yanks can breathe a little bit of sigh of relief from that. Kansas City down, Washington 7-6. Angels shut out the Indians 4-0. Tommy John takes a loss. He goes to 2-5. And, and as you just saw, the White Sox beat the Yankees 3-1. So the Yankees and Twins remain tied as both the Twins and New York lose. Baltimore can gain no ground. The White Sox and Tigers do. They are now 7 back. Wednesday, the 24th, Yankees and Orioles from Baltimore. That's the game for you. And on Saturday, the game of the week will be from Pittsburgh, the Reds and the Pirates. And until then, I'm Ron Juckett. We'll talk to you the next time.